Let's do it. This is how you watch C A Z. Hey, this is how you watch C A Z. Hey, keeping the faith in the king. And the patience will give us the free. So listen, we're here to teach the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American exactly who you are. According to the Bible, we want to teach you your greatness. The laws that the Lord set before the people of Israel to make us the greatest nation on the planet. Right. So why is it then that we get pushed back from the things that we're trying to teach? Why is it that our own people don't regard the words that we're speaking? Give me Psalms 78, 34. What is the problem with our people? A moment ago, we were trying to edify a group of people. It got out of hand, the police came, and now you're docile as a lamb. So let's look at what the Bible says. Why must we have oppression in our community? Why must we be shot down in the street with no justice and no peace? Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 34. When he slew them, then they sought him. If the Bible says when the Most High had you put to death, then you sought the Most High. Read. And they returned and inquired early after God. That's what's necessary. Hosea 5.15. That is what's necessary for the people of God. You got to be put to death. You got to be put in a very low estate before you humble your spirit and come back to the laws of God. It will continue to happen. You will continue to be bugged out of your mind on drugs. You're going to continue to be bugged out of your mind hating your own people until you return back to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. You are not a regular people walking up and down the street. That's Read. right. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Read it up. I will my place the till they acknowledge their offense. The Most High God said he will go and return to his place. He's going to depart from you until you repent and acknowledge the sins that you've done against God. Hear the word. Read. And seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me out. Read that part again. And seek my face. Uh -huh. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In your afflictions, in your getting shot down in the street, in your being the last one to get hired on the job, but the first one to get fired is cutback time. They about to come to your department. Understand that the Bible says that God will return to his place until you acknowledge your offenses. You are the sons and daughters of the living God. That's right. Why you got a problem with that? Hey, my brother right here with the scooter, with the son. Bro, bro, you got a minute? Pull up. I want to teach you something that you might not know, King. You got to bounce. All right, listen. We're teaching the word of God to the people of God. So why they ain't got time to hear it? Everything in life is more important than the word of God. Bring it up! Being given to the people of God, there's a serious disconnect. So my brother Chris, my brother Chris, you just witnessed some weird things that just happened right now, right? <laughs> so what happens is when the word of God goes out, guess what? It cuts to the soul of men and women. That's right. They can't abide the like commandments of God. Right? Ever. So, uh, uh, so Chris, my brother right here, what's your name, bro? Kendrick. Kendrick? Oh, praise bro. So I saw you talking to the officer earlier, bro. So uh, you know that you're an Israelite? Yes. All praise. What tribe are you from, bro? Uh, Judah. From the mighty tribe of Judah. All praises to the Lord. So who else is from the tribe of Judah? Jesus, Jesus Christ, right? So listen, how that make you feel knowing that you got that bloodline in your blood? Bring it out. What does that do for you? This is the way to bury But what I'm saying is, if you know that you are a son of God, right? You know that you're in the lineage of Christ. Does that make you look at your brother as though he is above now versus before when you didn't know that? Yeah. Right? It make you treat your brother differently, right? right? But it also, you gotta treat your sisters differently also, right? That's right! because they the daughters of Sarah, right. right? So listen, no longer can we whore out our sisters. The Bible says if I'm dealing with a woman sexually, I have to marry her. Right. You, you married, bro? No. Now you got girlfriend? Yeah. One, two, five? How many you got? One. Just one? All praise. So uh, how long you been with her? About two years. About two years. You been celibate for two years with that sister? Yeah. Yeah? So no sexual intercourse for two years. That's what oh. you no, we have had sexual. Okay, okay, okay. You can. What nation is your is your girlfriend from? She's she's black as well. She Judah as well. Yeah. All praises to the Lord. So give me that in uh, what was it uh, Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, Exodus, yep. Exodus sixteen twenty two, 
Exodus 16, 22. So, okay, Kendrick, so, and what about you? What about you, Chris? You, you, you married, bro? No. No, you, girlfriend? No. No? You celibate right now? Yes. Okay, all praise to the Lord. So listen, the Bible teaches us exactly how we're supposed to deal with each other, right? So read what you got. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow, no, no, Deuteronomy. Take a picture right here. No. Give me Deuteronomy, chapter 16, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's verse 22. Let me see. Get it for me, get it for me. Okay, so what we're about to show you, bro, is how we have to deal with our sisters. All right, because now put listen, on the camera. we ain't always had this privilege. We wasn't always out here teaching the commandments of God. Right? So give me Titus. Give me Titus three and three. We'll come back to it. Give me Titus chapter three and verse three. Right? So listen, we had to we had to learn what to do and how to treat our people, so that we could reform ourselves and then come out and teach our people what we're supposed to do. Right? So give me Titus chapter three and verse three. On back. Read what you got. This is the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures. We, hey, listen, all of us, we had our own sin that we was doing, bro. You know what? Some of us was robbers. Some of us went to prison. You see what I'm saying? Slinging cane, whoremongering, gang banging. We were sometimes foolish ourselves. That's right. But read it again, bro. Bring it out. For we ourselves, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. You see that? We all used to live like that, bro. Without the laws of God, this is who we are. Just plain, mere brute beasts, living however we feel like we need to live. We all did that. So listen, we're not, we're not trying to come at you and say, hey, we're so great, and you're not. No, not at all. You our brother, you see that? So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you the same pathway that you're on, we used to be on, and now we're on this one. And we want you to be on this one. You see what we're saying? Read on. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, to all men appeared. That's it. That's it. Christ came. We learned the laws of God. We learned how to set ourselves in order. We learned how to set our houses in order. And now we come out to reprove our people. You see that? So, Kendrick, uh, we was going over with Chris earlier, bro, some of the laws of God, some of the things that we are responsible for. Like you notice, everybody got the little funny, jiggly things on our shirt, right? It looks kind of weird, right? But the truth be told, this is a this is the law of God. We got to do this. It looked weird because we got away from it, right? But Notice the Native American. Notice, bro, that they had these on their clothes. You see that throughout, every, whenever you watch the cowboy Indian movies, right? They always got these, you ever wonder why they dress like that? I wonder why, how they would know that. How they would know it? Because they are the people of the book. That's right! You see that? Just like you, the people of the book. That's right! So now listen, certain memories have been taken away from us through shadow slavery, right? Through our, through our enslavement. So, Kendrick, when, we, when they put these chains on us, bro, did they let us read and write? No. How about the wise and strong men? Did they allow them to live? No, bro. Listen, we built the pyramids, right? Why now can nobody build the pyramids? You know why? Because the knowledge, the men who had the knowledge, they put them to death. The children was left. You can teach a child that the sky is green. And he'll say, oh, the sky is green. That's green, that's what green looked like, right? That's what happened to us, we got dumbed down. So now the knowledge that we had of who we are has been taken from us, all right? So now that you know you're an Israelite, bro, now that you know you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, does the Lord require anything of you? Do I require anything? Yeah, does God require anything of his children? I you to remember. You believe so, right? What you said, Chris? He requires you to remember. He requires you to remember what? The, the laws of God, who you are. And and do what? And abide by the laws. And abide by the laws of God. All right. praises to the Lord. So watch right. this. Watch what the Bible says. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Okay, so the Bible says God wants you to fear him. So, Kendrick. 
Don't that sound kind of weird? That it says God wants you to fear him? Yeah. It don't sound weird at all, right? What does it mean to fear the Lord? Respect. Well, to fear the Lord is to like look at him in awe. To look, okay, okay. I'm gonna clarify that. Hold that, because I got to finish that scripture. Hold that. Give me uh, Psalms 119 and verse 120. Psalms 119 and verse 120. Because the fear of the Lord is repeated over and over and over and over again in the Bible, but we gotta understand what it means, right? Because I could be walking down the street, and oh my God, oh, but I thought that was God. <laughs> Woo! It doesn't mean that way, all right? Now Chris, be very careful, bro. Be very careful, because I'm gonna tell you, the word of God is coming out, and Satan don't want you to get that thing. Right. The brother was standing here hearkening, and the devil came up and pulled the brother away. Right. All right. All right. So read what you got. <laughs> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. Read. My flesh trembles for fear of thee. So watch this, Kendrick. We're talking about the fear of the Lord, right? So read. My flesh trembles for fear of thee, uh -huh. and I am afraid of thy judgments. The Bible says, my flesh trembles for fear of thee, the Most High. I am afraid of the judgments of God. Right. Now drop that, go back to where you were, and give me Deuteronomy 32, 39. The judgments of God, right? Because guess what? The Most High is actually the Most High. He reigns, right? Is there anybody with him? Can anybody talk him out of a judgment that he want to give? Not at all. Watch this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 29. 39. See now that I, even I, am he. This is the most high. He says, look right now. Even I, I'm him. Watch this. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Come on. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. That's fearful right there. That's why we got to be afraid of God, right? He says, I'm him. Ain't nobody with me. You understand that? I'm the one that's killing. I make alive. I will wound you if I want to wound you. And I can heal you if I want to heal you. Neither is there anybody that can take you out of my hand. You see that? Don't we talk like that? We talk like that, bro. We're like, listen, I'm that dude, bro. You don't know who you're messing with. I'm him. That's what God said. I am him. There is no God with me. You see that? So there's a reason why we must fear the most high God and obey his commandments because my flesh trembles for fear of his judgments. Right. What is he going to do to me if I break his law? Right. You understand that? So now let's get some laws. Give me the book of Numbers chapter 15. Give me starting verse 37. So I want to teach you, Kendrick. Come on over, bro. I feel like I'm you way over there. Come on up, bro. Come on up. Come on up, come on up. Solid ground, man. You, you good? Okay, okay, okay. All right, bro, so we want to show you some laws, and we want to show you that the reason why we wear these little things. We're going to teach you some other laws as well. Okay, so read what you got. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garden. So the Lord told Moses, speak to the children of Israel, and make them worth, tell them about these things right here. Read. Throughout their generations, how long? Throughout the generation. Kendrick, you have children? Sadly, my daughter passed away this year. Oh, okay, okay. My condolences for your daughter. But we're continuing to generate, right? Continue to generate, because we have children, right? So it says, how long again? Throughout their generations, uh -huh. and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Okay, so Kendrick, so we're commanded to put upon the fringe of the border, a ribbon of blue. Notice everybody got a blue ribbon on top of their fringe. That's the commandment. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. and do them. And, and what? And do them. You see that? The fringes is for us to look upon. What they say? All the fringes. Remember the laws of God and remember that I got to do it. Right? Because. Dress I'm kind of wicked, be better. right? So if I don't have my fringes mm -hmm. on, hey, yeah. maybe, maybe I used to rob she people, and I, school. I might want to rob, right? right? In order for me to get ready to, oh man, oh shoot, I can't, I can't rob that brother. You see what I'm saying? I gotta try to get my mind together. So this is a physical reminder that I have to keep the.
commandments of God. Maybe I struggle with lust and I see Big Booty Judy walking by. Now all of a sudden, I'm lusting after the system. I got to check them fringes. You see that? So it's there as a reminder for us, because guess what? We kind of need it, bro. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, so what do you like to eat, bro? What's your, what's your favorite food to eat? You don't have one? Uh, you like sausage? No. Pepperoni? I guess I like eggs. You like eggs? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What about crab, lobster, calamari? I'll take some crab. You'll take some crab? What about some calamari, some uh, catfish? I like catfish. Pork chops? Pork chops. Barbecue rib, baby back ribs, and baby, baby, baby back. You like that? Yes. Okay, give me Leviticus chapter 11 and read verse 45 for me. We're going to start right there. And we'll come now. I want to show you something that's very important. Okay, because you're a holy person according to the word of God. Right? The Most High God, through Christ, created you, right? And the vessel that you walk around in, right? Yeah. So, um, let me ask you a question. The guy that made the Tesla, right? He made that car, the Tesla, right? right? Do you think he knows what kind of fuel is the best fuel to put into the car? I think he does. Okay, so now if he gave a recommendation of what fuel to put in, and you said, I ain't gonna put that in there, I'm gonna put in some Crisco oil into the gas. Cause that's what I want to put in is Crisco, because I, I got some Crisco. What do you think would happen to the car? It'll probably shut down. It'll probably shut down. You're gonna break down the car, right? So the one that made us, you think he knows what kind of fuel we should put inside of us? Yeah. Yeah, so if we put in different kind of fuel, what's gonna happen to us? You don't want it. We're gonna shut down the same way, right? We're gonna be broke. Okay, so watch this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So the, the Lord said, I brought you out of Egypt. You're going to be holy, which means to be separate, because I'm separate. Right? Go ahead. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Okay, so this law right here we're about to get into, give me verse 7. This law we're about to get in right here is the law he gave to us to determine what's clean we can eat and what's unclean we're not supposed to eat. Yeah. Right? What kind of fuel are you supposed to get? And what kind of fuel you better not get? Right. Right? Read verse 7. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. What's the swine, Kendrick? What's the swine, bro? Good question. That's a hog. That's pork. Yeah. Right. That's a pork, brother. That's a name for a pig. Pig is called a swine. Yep. You call him a what? A pig. A pig. A pig is a swine. Okay, read on. Though he divide the hoof uh -huh. and be covered for it. So though he's got split toes, he got two toes, right? Go ahead. Yet he cheweth not the cut. He doesn't have a cleaning system for the food he eat. Right. You understand? So whatever a hog eats, his pigs don't sweat. They don't sweat, bro. So all of those toxins is in their body. So when you eat that, you eating all the toxins, right? So a pig is a scavenger. You knew that, right? Yeah. And they eat you. They eat dead things. They'll eat you with right. your socks. They'll eat your shoes, eat your hair, the bone. They leave nothing, bro. Nothing. So now, do you really think you should eat a pork chop? No. They have beef chops, they maybe. You eat the beef, but not the pork, right? No, this brother clarified that up before I walked in. Okay, all praise. So you're done with the pork in your life. You're done. I feel like I am. All right, so so your girlfriend, that's what she ain't here. She might be at home right now. Oh, she gonna have to deal with it. With the sausages. She gonna have to have turkey sausage. She gonna have all praises all to right. the Lord. All, all praises. Right. Clap it up for that brother. Clap it up for that brother. All praises, bro. Hey, that's the humble spirit. That's how you got to have. It. But guess what? The same thing for crab, shrimp. Give me verse nine. Watch this. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. In the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Huh. It said, if it's in the waters, it's got to have fins and scales. Right. And then you can eat it. So now let me think. What about shark? Does shark have fins and scales? Should you eat it? No. What about catfish? Does it have fins and scales? No. Should you eat it? No, bro. 
You see that? So the Lord gave us a diet. He gave us a diet, bro. He built it ain't bad, right? It's some good food on that thing. You see what I'm saying? So listen, the shellfish, we gotta get away from it. Because Esau gave us crab and lobster and shrimp and made us pay these astronomical prices for bottom feeders, bro. For trash. You see that? Does it have fins and scales? Then no. If it's in the waters, if it doesn't have fins and scales, Kendrick, the Bible says we're not to consume that. Right. We are holy people unto God, right? So now, if we go against the laws of God, what is that called when we do that? That's straight sin. That is straight up sin. That's right. All praise. And you see how simple it is to determine what sin is. So there used to be five types of laws. The law of sacrifice that we had to kill animals, that's done away with because Christ fulfilled that. You understand that, right? So Christ is our sacrifice. But what about the other four, bro? So we still have the dietary law. Right. And his name, right? Well, hold on. We're going to deal with that. But right now I'm showing you the, the types of law okay. that we still have in the land for okay. us. We got the dietary law, what we're supposed to eat. We got moral laws, right? How we are to conduct ourselves, right? We got the civil laws that tell us how I got to deal with my brother, how I got to deal with my sister. And then we got ceremonial laws, our holidays. What are we supposed to celebrate, bro? Is Christmas among those things? What about Halloween? Halloween. Are we supposed to celebrate that? No. No? I don't know. If it's, I'm not. You don't know? If it's in the Bible. Or what you say? I say no Halloween. I say no Christmas. Okay. Uh, like today, uh -huh. it's not, it should be about God and when he goes to the cave, but it's about like giving. You know I mean? Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we got to clear that up. People have turned that into greed. Uh -huh. Like, okay, it's Christmas. Where's my money? Or like, where's my stuff? Okay, so the brother said we don't celebrate Christmas because it doesn't have the same meaning that it's supposed to have. That's what you said, right? Right. That's what I said. You say the same thing, Chris? Correct me. That's okay, okay. All right. So listen, we're going to go into the Bible, and we're going to see what the Bible says about Christmas. So give me the book of Jeremiah. Bring it up. Chapter 10. We can start right there in verse 1. You ready? Read what you got. Watch this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So first off, he's stating who he's addressing. The whole house of Israel, all 12 tribes. It said, don't learn the ways of the heathen, right? Because we as a nation had our own ways. Language, custom, traditions. So he says, don't learn what they're doing over there. So let's see what they did. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So don't be dismayed at the sun, the moon, the stars, your horoscope. I'm a Capricorn, I'm a Cancer. That's, don't be getting into that. That's what he's talking about. Right. Read on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The other nations love that stuff, bro. He gave them the sun and the moon and the stars for them to worship. You know why? They don't have a God, but you do. The God of this book is your God. Understand that. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. Come on. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So wait a minute. We're about to get into a vain custom of the heathen that we are not supposed to learn. So it said one cuts a tree out of the forest. This is a heathen tradition. Come on. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. So wait a minute. They go and they cut a tree down with an axe. They decorate it. That's what deck means. They decorate it with silver and with gold. Silver and gold. You heard that song before? They deck this tree with silver and gold. Come on. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Then they bring it in the house and they stand it up with some nails and the hammer so that the tree don't move. see where it's going. They're about to worship with the what, what custom is that? That's of what? But what? What uh, our holiday? Uh, what holiday is that today? Christmas. That is Christmas, brother. This is Jeremiah. You know, this brother lived two thousand years before the birth of Christ, and even at this time, it was an old custom from Babylon, the worship of Tammuz. Okay. Christmas tree. The Christmas tree. That's what this is going into. This is the worship of the Christmas tree. Okay. Read on. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Uh -huh. 
they must needs be born. That means they have to be taken. Because there was a saying in the time, if you did not pay homage to the tree by bringing gifts to it, why you put presents under the tree? Do you know? Because of this. Because of this. They thought if you didn't bring presents to the tree and worship it, that the tree would get up and kill you. That's why you put presents under the tree. You're taking gifts to that God. You see that? They never taught you that. They always told you this is a part of the birth of Christ. Why would bringing a tree into a house be a celebration of anyone's birth? You see that? But we're going to show you that the whole thing is pagan. I just always, I always, I always thought it was like pagan because like I never got to celebrate holidays or anything. All praise you. So like getting in here, going to different places and getting here different points of views is like uh -huh. you get to get to just like like God it to you. Like, give me, me Revelation 11. Revelation 11. So I'm going to show you this last part about that Christmas thing. All right, because the Bible said, learn not the way of the heathen. Right? So don't be cutting the tree down, bringing it in your house, decorating it with silver and gold. All praises. You don't celebrate Christmas. Well, I celebrate Christmas, but I don't, like, do anything with, like, like, I, I, like, I have a nice meal with myself. Okay. Revelations chapter 11 verse 10 and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them wait a minute it says the people in the earth they're going to rejoice over them the them is the children of Israel being in captivity we and make merry and they shall make what and make merry they made merry they gave you away and your sons and daughters as Christmas gifts Merry Christmas take this little Negro boy right here Merry Christmas take this little Negro girl right here. You see that? They made merry over the children of Israel. Read. And shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets, these two prophets, the southern kingdom, uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the northern kingdom, the remaining ten tribes. Go ahead. These two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Because we made them subject to the laws of God. You understand that? This is what we're here to do. So listen, Christmas is a pagan thing. We are not to celebrate Christmas, period, point blank. I need to make sure you understand that. That is not the ceremonial laws of God. You understand that? That is not supposed to be. Give me Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to show you. Because we have. Is that day or just like a regular day? Oh, brother. That day is a regular day. Give me Leviticus 23, and I want you to get your apocrypha and give me uh, Sirach 33. We'll get Sirach 33 and 7. And we're going to show the brother how did the Most High made certain days holy days and the other days they're just regular days, bro. So we're going to show you that, all right? So give me Sirach chapter 33 and start reading in verse 7. Yep. Read. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33 and verse 7. Yep. Why so one day excel another? So why is one day more special than another day? That's your question, right? Go ahead. When as all the light of did every you, day in right, the year is of it? You the sun. Listen, the sun come up and it go down every day of the year. So why is one day better than another day? Read. Uh, By the knowledge uh, back, of back, the back. Lord that were dis distinguished. Read it again. By the knowledge of the Lord right they there, were distinguished. Cast. By the knowledge of God the days have and been and distinguished. Come on. And he altered up. seasons and feasts. Come on. Go up, go up. Some of them have he the made later. high days. Some days the Lord made high days like today the sabbath Broadcast this is now. a high day right we're we'll not to buy and sell time. today we're not to cook today until the sun matter of fact it's a, a high holy day tomorrow as well okay because Tonight. it's a new moon right all right no, so no, the no, sabbaths no, 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 and the time. new moons are high days we're not to cook we're not to buy and sell we're not to work we're not to bear any burden and check that the day is right y'all understand that we don't some of them have he made high days uh -huh. and hollowed them, and some of them go, have he like made that. ordinary days. No, no some of the days, days are just ordinary just, days, bro. So now give me Leviticus 23. Just go live now. Just put Let's see in some of those so high days the gonna, gonna that the Lord made. Read verse the one. And later. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 1. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So listen, the full chapter of Leviticus chapter 23 lists all of the high holy days and the feast days 
of the Lord except for one. Okay, and the only one that's not mentioned there is the Feast of Dedication that didn't come about until the Greek captivity. It's spoken about in the book of 1 Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 59. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.